Do you guys remember LaMelo Ball? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, dear. No, I'm not talking about that LaMelo Ball. I'm talking about the LaMelo Ball who was an all-star at just 20 years old. The LaMelo Ball who was one of five players to average at least 23 points and eight assists per game over the last two seasons. And the only one of those players who wasn't an all-star either of those years. Do you guys remember that LaMelo Ball? Oh, Because with the combination of injuries and playing for the Charlotte Hornets, he's gone from very, very hyped and maybe slightly overrated to almost never talked about. And it would be one thing if he had shown signs of regression as a player, but even despite the injuries he's had, when he was on the floor last season, he still looked like a player with superstar potential. I mean, we all know he can do things on a basketball court that almost no one else can do. Just look at him on this play, go behind the back once, twice, three times, and then the step through with one hand palming the ball. Who even thinks to pull off a play like that, let alone does it? Or how about this freakishly good pass against the Wizards, just slicing the defense in half? These are the kind of things LaMelo can do on a consistent basis. But it's more than just the flashy plays or the crazy number of threes he takes. When LaMelo is at his best, he genuinely looks unstoppable. And there was no better example of that than when the Hornets played the Boston Celtics last season. A game in which the Hornets had no right to even compete in, let alone win. But because of how dominant LaMelo was, they pulled off one of the upsets of the year, with LaMelo going off for 36, 9, and 8. And not only did he lead them to victory, but he still managed to do what he does best. Oh, Here he is against Drew Holiday, just hitting him with the James Harden combos out top before driving left, and even with Holiday still attached, he just throws it up and it drops. And that might look like a lucky or fluky shot, but those are just the kind of shots he takes and makes. If you don't believe me, just look at him here against Hauser, where it's the exact same thing. Driving left, Hauser sticks with him, but Lamelo hangs and finishes from an incredibly difficult angle. And once again, look at him on this play, snaking around the initial screen, getting Brown on his back, and then through the contact, he dropped it in. This was a game in which LaMelo killed the Celtics in two ways. The mid-range with his touch and skill on floaters, and then also burying five three-pointers as well. And that is the highlight of his scoring. I think we can all agree his shooting form doesn't look very conventional, and it's the reason people questioned his shooting entering the draft, but it's time to start questioning if he's a good shooter or not just because of his form. Because not many players can shoot 37% from three for their career on over seven attempts a game. Taking 10 threes a game over the last two years and shooting 37% in that time as well. And just to really emphasize how great he is as a shooter, he ranks third in three-point makes per game the last two seasons. Do you guys want to guess the two players ahead of him? And I know I know people will hear 37% and think that's okay, but I'm telling you, Steph Curry and Klay Thompson have damaged everyone's idea of what great shooting is. Because to be able to shoot 37% on that kind of volume and with the variety of shots he takes, that is a great shooter. And I just mentioned there, but one thing about Lamelo's shooting that might sneak under the radar is the versatility. You associate Lamelo with step back threes and off the dribble shots, just like Luca and Harden. But he's also a very willing catch and shoot guy. Just like on this play where he sees Haywood in some trouble, so he runs out to the three point line and with a little screen from Williams, he's able to catch and shoot. Or in any number of plays where he's spotting up on the wing and just simply providing spacing, which is always super crucial for any team to have. Another part of his shooting that stands out is the range. I'm talking the Damian Lillard, Trey Young, Steph Curry type of range where he can effortlessly step into a three from 28 to 29 feet out, which is crazy to see considering he gets no lift from his legs, but it doesn't seem to affect him. And it's that level of shooting which gives him a really good floor as a scorer, because you're getting anywhere from 9 to 
12 points a game just strictly off jump shots. So with an additional four or five points a game at the free throw line, you're already 70% of the way to an average of 20 points. Hence why LaMelo has been able to average 23 a game of the last two seasons, despite still having some clear flaws in his offensive game. And it's worth mentioning that, because for all the good LaMelo does, and as exciting as he is to watch, he's clearly still a flawed player. Now, I wouldn't go as far as saying some of the things people in the media have said, however. I don't know that LaMelo Ball can play winning basketball. His efficiency is garbage. His defense is horrific. And I don't, I don't see a lot of evidence that the guy considers winning to be a priority. Ladies and gentlemen, that is what you call embellishment, hyperbole, exaggeration, any of those synonyms would apply to that statement about LaMelo. Because sure, is he the best defender? No. But neither is Ja Morant, or Trey Young, or Luka Doncic, or Jalen Brunson, or Tyrese Halliburton. And I could keep going, because it is extremely rare to find an extremely talented offensive guard who is also good defensively. Yet there are certain players like LaMelo, or Trey, or Luka that seem to get more criticism for their defense than other guys who are realistically similarly poor defenders. The same goes for the statement about his efficiency. Would you believe me if I told you Tyrese Maxey finished with a true shooting percentage one point higher than LaMelo last season? Probably not, because people are quick to look at LaMelo's field goal percentage and say he's awfully inefficient without recognizing that he takes 10 three-pointers a game. And believe it or not, Twos and threes are not created equally. But if we were to actually properly evaluate LaMelo Ball as a player, we could recognize he has some ridiculous strengths that are on par with some of the best players in the league, but his weaknesses on offense revolve around throwing some careless turnovers and his inability to finish at the rim. If LaMelo Ball could finish at the rim, life would be beautiful, but that's not quite the case. And when you look at his struggles around the rim, a few things stand out. One issue he has is he's very quick to leave his feet. Guys like Lucas, Shea, and Brunson are so patient and will probe until the defense makes a mistake. Lamelo is a bit more erratic, and often he will attack space and then get caught having to make a split-second decision on the fly, which leads to some incredible highlights, but having that additional patience when attacking down Hill could be beneficial. The other clear problem he has is his strength. Lamelo does a pretty good job at getting where he wants to on the floor with his combination of size and ball handling, and often he'll be able to shrug off a defender, but in the process, he loses his own balance and ends up throwing up a wild shot. Just take this play for example, where he does a good job at getting Macau Bridges on his back initially, but doesn't quite have the strength or the willingness to keep him there, so the angle at which he throws up the shot is incredibly difficult. Compare that to someone like Luka Doncic, and once the defender is on his back, Luka will keep him there and get all the way to the rim every single time. I think it's also valid to say that Lamelo has a pretty poor whistle. Quite frequently, he'll get downhill and get his arms chopped or have a player reach in without him getting a call. But if he can improve his ability to finish around the rim with all the other positive traits he has, we could be looking at an offensive superstar. At the very least, he's damn fun to watch. And for that sake, I hope he gets back healthy. Now, if you did make it all the way to the end of the video and want to see more content like this, consider subscribing. It's free. Dropping a like on the video would be much appreciated. Most importantly, have a great day. Bye.